Alltså, so, this is Playtime Movie Fan and welcome to the final video of Alfred Hitchcock month. I'm gonna end this month by listing my favorite movies directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And let me tell you, making a list was no easy task. Because Alfred Hitchcock made so many fucking awesome movies in his career. In fact, this was originally a top 20, so I'm here to push five movies off the list. As for who Alfred Hitchcock is, well that guy needs no introduction. He was a fucking brilliant director and one of the best in the movie injury. And there's a damn good reason why me and many others consider him a fucking legend of filmmaking. With that all being said, let's get started on this list. Number 15. The Lady Vanishes. This movie is loaded with interesting characters. Henderson, Gilbert, fucking Dr. Hart, the list goes on. But the most interesting character of them all is Miss Fry. She's very fucking funny, very fucking smart and overall a fucking awesome lady. And she's really the main focus of the movie. I won't tell you exactly what happens to her, but I will say that the title implies it a bit. Number 14, The Paradigm Case. The movie starts at a mansion of some sort. The person living in that mansion gets arrested. But the movie does not focus on that woman that got arrested. Instead it focuses on Madalena Anna Paradigm. She is a very fucking beautiful woman, and not to mention a smart woman as well. Oh, and that case, it's very fucking mysterious. I know I'm extremely goddamn brief here, but the reason I am is because I'm trying to keep this list video spoiler free. But there is one thing that I can talk about before I move on to the next entry. Anthony Keen is the horse, but he is a very smart individual. Enough said. But anyway, let's move on. Number 13. Rope. Now how do you accomplish making a movie about murderers who enjoy doing it and don't feel like the protagonist is an asshole in the slightest? I don't know how you accomplish doing that, but Alfred Hitchcock fucking did it with this movie. Barton Shav is shown who murders for fun, not only that, he also views it as an art form. That's so fucking creepy and it works for this movie since it is a dark comedy. This is basically a Quentin Tarantino movie without the F-bombs. What do I mean by that? Well, it has long drawn out dialogue just like Quentin Tarantino movies. And there is nothing going on in the movie besides that. And you know what? That's fucking awesome because the dialogue is funny, clever, and not too much fun to listen to. Number 12, Murder. Most of this movie takes place at a courtroom. And the people that are arguing about whether or not a certain murderer is guilty of murder. The thing that makes this movie so interesting is the fact that the murdering scene is not shown. So it isn't clear if he's guilty or not, and that's fucking awesome. Things make more sense as the movie progresses, but it's still a fucking mystery. And you know what? That's what I love about this movie. Number 11, The 39 Steps. So basically, in the beginning of the movie, a woman gets murdered. And because of that, the protagonist, Richard Honey, is a fucking fugitive, even though he isn't the one who murdered the woman. Throughout the movie I was rooting for him to escape and to be able to maybe prove that he is fucking innocent. And that's what makes the movie very suspenseful. Oh and that woman that I mentioned that got murdered? She's a fucking spy agent. That's very interesting indeed. Number 10 Topaz. This movie is basically about some US Asians who want information about what a communist is up to. I must admit, I find this movie very interesting and the story is great. This movie is simply a great historical piece. Seeing those Asians 
spying on those communists in other countries. It's very interesting and very fun to watch. Number 9. The man who knew too much. This movie doesn't just hold up, it holds up extremely well. In fact, if I were to compare it to some of the action thrillers made today, I would say it's one of the best even then. Yeah, it's that fucking awesome. So plot of the movie is basically a guy has too much fucking information, hence the title The Man Who Knew Too Much. And a lot of people also want him fucking dead. I fucking love every aspect of this movie. But there is one thing that I must talk about though. Why the hell did Alfred Hitchcock remake this movie 20 years later? I think that was a pointless decision on his part. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not as bad as anything released by Platinum Dunes. In fact, I wouldn't even say that the remake is a bad movie overall. It's still good, but in 1930s, the man who knew too much didn't need to be fucking remade. It really didn't, because it holds up extremely well in my opinion. So why did he do it? I don't know, frankly I think Alfred Hitchcock should have just let his original masterpiece be. Number 8, Rebecca. Despite the title, the protagonist of this movie is not Rebecca, instead she is Mrs. Steventer. But despite that, this is a romance movie that holds up even to this day. I'm not a big fan of romance movies at all. In fact, I rarely watch them. But this is one that's fucking awesome even 75 years later. The thing that makes it hold up even to this day is the fact that it's very realistic and the feelings the husband and wife had for each other are very legitimate. As for why the movie is called Rebecca, well, I'm not gonna tell you since I won't spoil anything. You should definitely check this movie out. I highly recommend it. Number 7, To Catch a Thief. The plot of this movie is basically an innocent man is accused of robbing something, so he has to prove that he is innocent by catching a real robber. I must admit, this movie is a lot of fun and a great thrill ride. And throughout the movie, I was rooting for that guy to prove his innocence. Fucking hell yeah, this movie is awesome! Number 6, Vertigo. So basically, John Ferguson is a retired detective. But he has to do one more job for his boss before he retires completely. And that is to spy on his wife. The concept to me does sound fucking creepy. Creepy in a good way and it worked. And also regarding that woman he is spying on, there is something very special about that woman. You will know when you see the movie yourself, which I highly recommend you do. Number 5, The Birds. This movie basically is the story of birds that are attacking for no fucking reason. And it works for the movie, because of the fact that there is no fucking reason why those fucking birds attack. It makes the movie more scary and more mysterious, and I like that. Also, the protagonist Marlene Daniels is very fucking smart, fucking pretty. And she is someone who is worth rooting for the entire movie. This is one of my favorite horror movies, hands down. But not exactly my favorite Alfred Hitchcock horror movie. Which horror movie is my favorite from Alfred Hitchcock? Well, you will see it higher up on this list. Number 4. The Lodger, A Story of the London Folk. Of course, I was gonna put at least one silent movie on here. I mean, after all, Alfred Hitchcock was fucking brilliant in the silent era as well. Anyway, this movie basically has a story of murders taking place. And throughout the movie, we are meant to question how the hell that's even happening and who the murderer is. I like movies with a lot of mystery and this movie sure as hell has that. Since it's a silent movie, of course there is text instead of speech, which I'm fine with. I like that style of filmmaking. Anyway, this movie is fucking awesome and holds up even to this day. But there are a few 
Alfred Hitchcock movies I like even more. Number 3, Tight M for Murder. This is a murder mystery movie that holds up so fucking well. There is a lot of dialogue in this movie, which is fine. The dialogue in the movie is, after all, very fucking interesting and very fucking awesome. But surprisingly, the protagonist of this movie isn't my favorite character of the movie. It's the fucking inspector. He's very smart and very clever, and he is the main reason why this movie is so fucking awesome. And not to mention, he's very rational. Overall, this is a fucking awesome movie that I highly recommend you guys check out. Number 2, Psycho. I don't need to describe the famous shower scene, you guys all know about it. But that's not the only thing about the movie that's fucking awesome. The build up to that scene is fucking brilliant and I also love what happens after that. The protagonist is fucking awesome, she is normal. In a very good way. And yeah, the movie has a lot of fucking tension. This is truly one of the greatest horror movies ever made. It's not my number one favorite though. That would be A Nightmare on Elm Street. But this comes very damn close. If you haven't seen this movie yet, you should see it. There's a damn good reason it's considered a fucking classic. Number one, North by Northwest. A lot of people confuse a man of George Kaplan. So this guy has to run away from people who accuse him of crimes he didn't commit. And this movie is also an extreme fucking thriller ride. It's exciting from beginning to end. And throughout the movie I'm hoping the guy will go out alright. Yeah, this is one of the most thrilling and exciting movies of all time. There isn't a dull moment in this movie and that's why it's so fucking awesome and that's why it's my favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie. This has been my list of favorite Alfred Hitchcock movies. As for if I will review any of those movies, well I might review some of them in the future. We'll see. Well guys that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.